You're out camping late one night in hopes of seeing a shooting star. Suddenly, you see one. You wish that your special someone will fall in love with you. But when you wish upon a star, what are you actually wishing upon? What is a shooting star? This is our solar system. Because the sun's gravity is so strong, nearly everything has settled into similar orbits. We call this the orbital plane. Most maps of the solar system just show the planets, but there are a lot of objects flying around in space. This is the asteroid belt, roughly between Mars and Jupiter. Beyond Neptune is the Kuiper belt, and out here is the Oort cloud. There are also lots of stuff that doesn't fit neatly into any of these categories. The smaller you get, the more of it there is. All of these space objects are flying around and sometimes colliding with Earth. When these objects hit Earth, they burn up in the atmosphere, creating brilliant streaks of light. This is what causes shooting stars. However, did you know that most shooting stars are not spaceship-sized rocks hitting Earth's atmosphere? Most shooting stars are actually just little specks of dust, and most of the dust comes from comets. Comets come from the most distant reaches of our solar system, where the sun's gravity barely hangs on. This lovely location is called the Oort Cloud. Scientists have never actually seen the Oort Cloud because it's light years away and very dark. But based off the unique orbits of comets, they hypothesize that there must be a massive cloud of icy and rocky material with millions of comets surrounding our solar system in a giant sphere. Because comets that do make it into our solar system come from so far away, they orbit our sun differently than any other body in the solar system. Rather than staying on the same orbital plane as most of the planets and everything else, comets orbit in tight ellipses tilted at amazing variations from the orbital plane. Orbital shapes are described in terms of eccentricity. An almost perfect circular orbit, like Venus follows, has an eccentricity of almost zero. On the other hand of the spectrum, the famous comet Hale-Bopp, which passed the Earth in 1997, has an eccentricity of nearly one, which is about as eccentric as you can get without getting flung out of the solar system forever. Because they have such eccentric orbits and come from so far away, some comets take hundreds to millions of years to orbit the sun. For example, we won't be seeing Hale-Bopp again until the year 4380. Up close, a comet is just a pile of extremely dark, dusty rocks held together by frozen gases and water. As a comet's orbit takes it closer to the sun, it transforms into something far more beautiful. The sun warms the frozen ice of the comet. The heat causes the ice to melt, or rather, sublimate. This means the ice skips the liquid phase and goes straight from solid into gas. The increasing pressure from the expanding gas trapped in the comet creates many explosions on the surface. These mini explosions release gas along with chunks of rock, ice, and space dust. The gas forms a cloud that surrounds the comet called a coma. And as this gas and dust gets pushed farther away from the comet by solar winds, it forms a long, beautiful tail that can extend for millions of miles away from the sun. The light we see isn't emitted from the comet, rather we see the light of the sun reflected in all that gas, dust, and ice. The larger particles ejected from the comet continue in roughly the same orbit. This is called the dust trail, or meteoroid stream. After making multiple passes into the sun, completing the same orbit again and again and again, the comet has ejected enough space dust to form a complete meteoroid stream. This debris fills the orbit of the comet. Imagine if someone paces around your kitchen table, eating cookies following the same path each time. Eventually, there will be a complete ring of cookie crumbs left behind. This is essentially what a meteoroid stream is, a giant ring of space crumb debris or future shooting stars. Each year, when Earth passes through this meteoroid stream, we intercept all the specks of dust and rock left behind, and a meteor shower is the result. So even hundreds of years after a comet has passed through our solar system, the Earth can continue to enjoy a meteor shower every year around the same time when we pass through the comet's old orbit. So next time you witness a meteor shower, tell your friends it's more like a dust shower. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for our next video to learn about much bigger objects that hit our planet and how likely they are to hit you. Larger objects from other sources can also cause shooting stars. Sometimes they explode and it's pretty awesome. See you next time.